It's not uncommon for people to spend their whole life waiting to start living. We live through repetitive patterns. We do the same familiar routines in the same predictable ways without much thought or conscious choice. When things happen to us, we can react, and if there's a deadline, it can force our hand. But still, time slips away. Days blend into weeks or months. We simply go through the motions, stuck on autopilot. But it doesn't have to be that way. With a little intention, direction, and effort, you can turn off autopilot. I have a trip out of state and I thought that it would be a great backdrop to talk about how to turn off autopilot mode. I've had this vacation planned for over a year at this point. And when I was first thinking about it, I knew that I would want to film or document it in some way, but I wasn't sure what that would look like. And so it wasn't a very big priority. It got put on the back burner and I didn't think about it until of course, more recently, trips right around the corner, super excited, spreadsheets, times, the whole nine yards. And it took an offhand comment from my dad for me to realize that I had completely forgot that I was going to film. And when I had that realization, I kind of dawned on me, I, I've been stuck on autopilot. And so I did the unreasonable thing and I went online and I learned everything that I could on how to get out of a rut, to get rid of complacency, to turn off autopilot. And so I thought that this vacation would be a good opportunity for me to get my head on straight and share with you the things that are working for me. But unfortunately, it's covered in rain and thunderstorms and it's gonna be that way for the duration of my trip. But I think we can still find some interesting places to film and talk about this. All right, so what does being on autopilot look like? Your routine is predictable. You're always busy or distracted. Time flies by, you feel guilty maybe like you're missing out. It probably means that you do things without thinking about it or making any real effort. You make automatic decisions and they're probably not in line with how you wanna live your life. Or maybe you're stuck in your head, like your mind is filled with noise and you're unable to process your thoughts or your emotions, unable to focus, or maybe you're stuck in thought loops. Hell, maybe you're just bored. But it may also be a sign that you're feeling burnt out or you're not coping well with stress. Whatever the cause, you can get off autopilot and take back control of your life. I think the trick to breaking out of autopilot is self-reflection. The brain is lazy and it has a system that works for it and it's never gonna change. So if you wanna change, you have to intentionally make decisions or it'll make them for you. And it'll be the same thing each time because it's worked for you in the past and it's probably pretty comfortable. To break that cycle, you need to take an honest look at yourself and ask some hard questions, and then don't avoid the answers. But I think you can create a roadmap for living intentionally. Hi, my name is Dave Jeltsma, and I have a couple of tips for autopilot. Here are the things that I think work best. You have a head start on this one since you're already watching this video, but I think it's also the most important tip that I can give you, and it's what's working best for me, and that's awareness. It goes without saying that the times I find myself on autopilot are when I'm not paying attention. Generally, all it takes for me to stop doing something that I shouldn't or don't want to be doing is to realize that I'm doing it. So I'm trying different ways to be more aware, things like mindfulness or meditation. But maybe you're like me and you don't want to dive headfirst into those things, in that case, I think the real important bit is just to ask yourself questions. Each time you go to the bathroom, ask yourself how you're feeling. Or when you pull out your phone, you know, is it because you have a few moments to kill? Or is it maybe because you're trying to avoid something? Try to pause and reflect more often. In my experience, this isn't easy, but it does get easier over time. It's a skill that you build up and it takes some practice. You gotta train your brain. With time, I've found myself on autopilot a little bit less often. I think it's important to talk about the other side of autopilot. And by that, I mean, I honestly don't think it's possible to live without it. Our brains aren't meant to be full effort at all times. 
I can't imagine having the willpower to be in full control of all of my actions forever. I don't know about you, but that sounds beyond exhausting. Autopilot, I think, is our brain's way to rest. It's so that we can handle things that we already know how to do automatically or by default. It saves our effort and willpower for when there are new things to learn and experience. So all this to say, I think a better approach would be to try and get autopilot to work for us instead of against us. To leverage your brain's superpowers so that when you're on autopilot, you're moving in the direction you want to be. If you thought the first tip sounded hard, this one is practically cruel. You need to intentionally set up moments where you do things that you are uncomfortable with. You need to leave your comfort zone. If you're stuck doing the same comfortable things by default and it's getting you nowhere, then you need to expand your comfort zone so you can make the things you want to do become automatic. This one is particularly hard for me. The last thing I want to do is to feel embarrassed or cringe or to impose or even ask for help. But it's a necessary evil because discomfort is a path to personal discovery and growth. And it's probably one of the best ways to learn. I think the best way to do this is baby steps. Break it down into something that's doable and sustainable. In the same way that you don't try and lift 50 pound dumbbells on your first ever workout, you need to work up to the major stuff. This is the key to transformation. Little bits of effort spread out over a long period of time. And then when you look back in six months, three years, a decade, you'll see that you're not the same person. And I think that's how you expand your comfort zone and to get your autopilot to work for you. There are a handful of other things you could try to do, like changing your environment by redecorating your bedroom or altering your nightly or morning routines. You can eat and drive intentionally without distractions. If you normally don't cook, try and make something. You could go to a park and just walk, pick up a new hobby, try disc golf. It's like $20 to try out. Set some new goals, practice mindfulness, do some yoga, anything to disrupt your routine. Try to find joy in each day's little moments. Recognize when something is just for you. Also, I'd recommend having a trip planned and then the one after that as well. Having something to look forward to makes everything easier. And I think I'm going to make sure that I always know when to expect the next one. All right, I'm back home and I learned a lot on my trip. And I hope that I was able to convey these lessons to you fairly well and that you found the video valuable. If you made it this far and you did find the video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and maybe even subscribed. There's also a good chance that you might enjoy my video about how to shift into a producer mindset. If that sounds interesting, you can find it up top by clicking and tapping up there or in the video description down below. My name is Dave Jeltima. Be kind to yourself and thanks for watching.